We have breaking news. E. Jean Carroll filing a blistering response to Donald Trump's attempt to stay the $83 million judgment against him, insisting it has no basis in law and should be denied. I want to bring in MSNBC legal correspondent Lisa Rubin. You and I have been quickly going through this speed reading. It is brutal. Let me read just a little bit. This is page one. <laughs> there is absolutely no basis in law for Trump's requested relief. He simply asked the court to trust me and offers in a case with an $83.3 million judgment against him, the court filing equivalent of a paper napkin signed by the least trustworthy of borrowers. How does it go on from there? Chris, they make a number of arguments about why the court shouldn't take Trump's word for it. And let me just step back for a second. This is an effort by Donald Trump to get an indefinite stay without having to post the kind of appeals bond that we've been discussing, not only in this case, but also in the civil fraud trial that the attorney general recently won. And in fact, they bring that civil fraud trial up as one of their concerns about Trump's cash position. They say there is no legal justification under federal law for obtaining a stay without any security, which is what Trump is proposing here, right? A stay without having to put up any money. But they say even if there were, they have very serious concerns about Trump's cash position and the feasibility and ease of collecting on the judgment in this case. Why? Because just yesterday, he tried to get a New York state appeals court to let him put up only $100 million as security for that $454 million judgment judgment against him. That was rejected on an interim basis. Trump still has an opportunity to brief that, but they're saying we can see that he is desperate. And then going back to the point that you raised, which is they say there is no transparency or trustworthiness when it comes to his financial situation, because again and again, we've seen him try to hide the ball with the American people and with the public. And they cite everything from the evidence in the case that Judge Ngoron recently decided that same New York civil fraud case, but also to our, our friend and colleague Suzanne Craig is reporting for the New York Times, where she excavated years of Trump's tax returns and other financial information to show that his financial picture was not what he portrayed it to be to the American public. They also quote Suzanne Craig's investigative work, among others, saying that Trump maintained a long history of attempting to skirt his debts adding that between 1990 and 2009, his companies declared bankruptcy six times. And Trump's motion should be denied because he has not established the requisite strong likelihood of success in reducing the jury award. So is part of his argument, hold on, I'm going to try and get this jury award reduced. And in the meantime, Let's put this all on hold. And she's saying that's essentially they're saying that's a joke. Well, let me let me sort of take this apart for you. Yeah. In the ordinary course, in order to obtain a stay, one of the factors is that you have to show that you're likely to succeed on the merits of your argument. So Trump, in his brief, saying you should stay this indefinitely while I pursue post-trial motions, including a motion to reduce the judgment, is that I'm likely to win. The case law is in my favor. And they're saying that's not true at all. This judgment may look large, but there is ample justification in the law and on the facts for the $83.3 million that the jury awarded to their client. How soon do you think we might hear uh, well, about what's going to happen So here? Judge Kaplan, who is the judge presiding over this case in federal district court in Manhattan, has already set a timetable here. This brief was in fact due today. Trump has a reply due on March 2nd, which is over the weekend. And then I think we'll hear from Judge Kaplan fairly soon. Why? Because otherwise, the automatic stay ends on March 8th, and that's when he has to post his bond.